Welcome to Locally Sourced. I'm Armanda Famoletti. If you're looking for family-friendly, fun things to do around Putnam County, you came to the right place because tonight my guest knows all the things to do to have adventures around Putnam County. Welcome, Steve Matson. Hi. Good to be here. Well, I'm so glad you came. Um, so, Steve, tell us about adventures around Putnam. That's your business or your sideline or what is that? Uh, more of a hobby at this point. Uh, kind of gets my mind off my day job. Uh, I moved here in 2001 two, or 2000 and uh, started exploring when I, I came up here. And uh, you know, I'd spend hours looking for places to go. And then I'd talk about it afterwards and people would say, oh, I've lived here for 25 years. I never knew that existed, um, which I thought was strange. <laughs> and uh, it was always hard to find everything all in one place. So wheels kind of started turning. Uh, I approached the local paper about writing a column, like going out and doing these things and writing about mm -hmm. it to kind of share the experiences. Um, got a tremendous response from that, from the public, like these fantastic letters and emails from people. And um, that kind of got the idea to put together in book form. Mm -hmm. So in 2011, I published Adventures Around Putnam, Volume 1. Okay, I think we have uh, a slide of the book, and there it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll probably come back in a minute, um, and so we can look at it more closely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, Volume 1, where's Volume 2? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Uh, 2011, it, come on, Steve. I know, I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit slow. Um, I figure by the time I'm 130, I'll have a good four <laughs> or five volumes out. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's funny, what happened is I, I put 62 places in that first book. And uh, again, got a great response from it. Can we see the cover of the book? Thank you. And, it's going to uh, come up. Okay. Keep Perfect. going. Um, so, you know, I put 62 places in there. Uh, kind of a good cross section of, of Putnam County. Yep, there you go. And uh, the idea was every couple of years publish a different volume. Uh, what I have found though is about 40 years old seems to be the cutoff. People that are 40 and above, like me, tend to read print books. We buy books. Uh -huh. People under 40, they're more online, you know, social media, that type of thing. So a couple of years ago, I put together a website called Adventures Around Putnam where people can search by, and it's a work in progress at this point, where people mm -hmm. can search by an activity in a town or if they want to look for waterfalls or hiking or fishing or that type of thing. Okay. And the idea is, is over time, I will have all the places in Putnam County in there. But it's, it, it's a work in progress. You know, okay. there's, in my database of places in Putnam is over 500 places. Wow. And there are not 500 places on the website as of yet. Okay, so you have a full-time job Sure. along with your interest in adventures, adventures around Putnam County mm -hmm. and history. Well, this was a great way to get, keep my kids from watching TV, keep them off electronics. Okay. Um, you know, knowing something about your area, I think she gives you a sense of belonging, a uh, little bit of continuity. And I found that going out and exploring local hikes and history is, how do I say this, uh, as with a young family, fiscally prudent. Which okay. is a nice way of saying it's cheap. Cheap, yeah. So um, yeah. it's good. You get exercise. Yeah, you get great exercise. Mm -hmm. You're not spending any money and uh, getting fresh air. Right. Which and is it's good amazing for what you. you find. It, it, the thing with Putnam is we miss it, but we have so many neat things around here. Yeah. And people just don't know about it. Our history, the hiking, the places we have to explore. Um, so my kind of mission was to get that information out there and share it. So you've been doing this with your kids for a while. Are they really good local historians? Could they take your place in terms of explaining some of the great sites and places we have in Putnam? They probably could. I don't know if they would want to. Um, it kind of depends. It's funny. Um, my oldest son, when we're driving around, he'll notice the names of roads relating to family members, and he kind of brings it up to me, but he's, he's joking. You know, he's kind of... Oh, he's kind of pretending he's you. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but it's great. I mean, it's funny. Nowadays, when we drive around, uh, if we pass a cemetery, someone in the car will, Dad, Dad, cemetery. <laughs> I um, stop for cemeteries, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Or if they see, like, a trailhead or something like that, they'll make sure that, that I know about it. Okay. So it's fun. It's become, like, a nice family event. Yeah. Well, it's good for kids to have a sense of humor. Just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So what are some of your favorite places around Putnam? You've had lots of time to discover them. Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, there's a lot of them. The, the thing that's great about Putnam is that when you think about it, we're a mile, you know, or a mile, uh, an hour from the city. Uh, we're a day's drive from the Adirondacks, the Berkshires, the Catskills, beaches. I mean, all these amazing things to do. Uh -huh. And there's a lot just within Putnam. Um, I would say 
you know, if I had to go for a day, I, I think of Putnam in three different pieces. You have the western half, which is the Highlands, the Hudson River, right. a lot more majestic. Uh, then you have the center, which is a little bit less populated, and you've got that 14,000-acre uh -huh. Fonstock State Park. Right. The Appalachian Trail runs through there. Uh, and then you've got the eastern portion with the, huge, the Great Swamp, which is a great recreational area, all the reservoirs. Uh -huh. Um, there's a lot to do. Uh, a couple properties in the area, Laurel Ledges and Patterson, which is a Putnam County Land Trust property. In the fall, I love it. The Hudson Valley Trust has a property uh, behind the Lawler Building at 164 and 311. That is a short walk, but in the fall, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. The fire tower. Is it marked well? Um, no. I, fi I find I, I have trouble finding signs. Yes. And <laughs> you have had that I, trouble I, too. I did. And what's one of the, the reasons, deal with that? What's funny, if you look at the format of the book and the website, I try to make it very clear because I always worry about am I going to get, get in trouble for trespassing? Am I on private property? So I make a point of giving directions, giving very good descriptions because a lot mm -hmm. of times when I read other books, you know, I, I read about it and I go somewhere and I'd say that really wasn't a good description. So my goal was that when somebody goes to a place after they've read about it in my book, one, they're not lost getting there. <laughs> they know where they can go. And when they get done, they say, yeah, that was a really good description of, of you know, what we did. Oh, good. So yes. it is hard to find places. Um, and that goes back to why I put it on the website so mm -hmm. that you can find these things. Right. Well, why is there a lack of signage? Is that a municipal thing? Is that uh, residents of those areas don't want people traipsing around uh, in their neighborhoods? or? Um, I think it's a little bit of all of the above. You know, I, I think that we, as a county, we could do a much better job promoting what we have. Uh, you know, for, for economic development, I think there's four things that you need for good, mm -hmm. what I would call effective, responsible, kind of life-enriching development. You need things that are unique, indigenous, unrepeatable, and experiential. Wow. Um, so what we should be showcasing is what we have here. We've got the stone chambers, the reservoirs, the Hudson River, the Revolutionary War history, the Civil War history, um, you know, our history of mining, railroads, the circus, farming, those types of things. Mm -hmm. You know, We have encampments in this county, and other areas have done a good job of showcasing them or making them the tourist destinations. What's an encampment? Uh, well, during the Revolution, there was, I think it was 17,000 soldiers encamped up in Patterson, okay. where kind of where Route 22 and 311 intersect. Most people don't know about it. No, you I know, didn't know was, about there that. There was a place called Continental Village down in, near Putnam Valley on uh, the southwest corner of the, prop of, of the county mm -hmm. where there was a, a Continental Village you know, with storage and that type of thing, and it got burned in October of 1777 by the British. Um, most people don't know about it. Right. What is a Continental Village as opposed to a regular village? Where they had soldiers that were fighting in the Revolutionary War. Okay. We're staying there. Okay, okay. And so there were so many soldiers there, they had a village. They yeah, a I village. think the number was like 2,000. Wow. The barracks were big enough to hold 2,000 soldiers. You know, well, that's a pretty substantial size. And, we, I mean, there's one little historical marker, but there's really, wow. there's not a really easy way to visit it. I recently found a, a self-guided tour of it. I haven't really been able to go out and explore it. And, again, even doing this guided tour, mm -hmm. you're afraid you're going on private property. It's, right. it's not really clearly marked. Right, right. So. But lots of times there are easements, right? So when you see a sign that says private road or private this, mm -hmm. there's usually an easement because that's the only way you can get to the, the historical place or the open space that you want to visit, right? So right. my I tend to just ignore the private road signs and just go <laughs> for it. Right. Would you recommend that's a good policy? or uh, Generally, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you kind of have to know before you're going somewhere. And that's one of the reasons I did the website is that you, you Well, can give uh, no someone... trespassing, I respect, mm -hmm. right? Um, private property, I respect. Private road, not so much. But, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we agree to disagree on that. I don't want people to come out after me with a shotgun or anything, but if they see me walking up right. their road. But as I understand it, that's how you can go to a private road if that's how you get to where you need to get to. Mm -hmm. um, so you know a lot about local history, and I went to your website, which is great, and I went to your Facebook page, and I downloaded some photographs, um, and I thought it would be great if we showed those photos, and okay. maybe you could tell us a little bit extra about what we're seeing. So that's sure. pretty dramatic. What is that, Steve? Uh, that Well, remember, I call it Adventures Around Putnam, because I take a Putnam-centric view of the world. Uh, Good for you. you know, <laughs> anything in or just or just outside of Putnam. So that is uh, Pudatuck State Forest, uh, Squance Pond. 
Uh, that's called Council Rock. Is that in Connecticut? It is. It's uh, apparently that was a spot where there were Native Americans that held meetings, uh, and under that sort of open. Um, correct. I'm assuming kind of right where uh, where you're someone is standing. Yeah. Uh, that was we took the the Boy Scouts there on a, a nice hike in the winter, and gorgeous, great views of Candlewood and Squans Pond, um, and the rock formation is just you know very impressive. That's phenomenal. What's this? This is a spot not a lot of people in, in Putnam get to see. Um, Fonstock is a 14,000 acre park, kind of horseshoe shaped in the center of the county. In the center of that horseshoe is a 900 acre Boy Scout preserve called Durland. And there's some great trails up there. So this is actually a picture of from the top of one of the trails looking down on two bodies of water. And you're kind of looking southwest here. And just some gorgeous views there. Now you said Boy Scout preserve. I'm not a Boy Scout. Can I go there? Uh, well, I think on this actual trail there is some permission. You can't go on most of the trails there unless you know somebody that's in Boy Scouts and you're, you're, there, you're there with them. Okay. Well, I know you now, so I just <laughs> mentioned your name. I don't know if that's going to work, but you could give it a shot. <laughs> and, and our viewers just mentioned Steve Matson, <laughs> and you'll be able to go anywhere in the Boy Scout Preserve. And yeah, what's this? I don't this? know about that. Uh, that is uh, Indian Falls over in uh, like the Cold Spring Garrison area. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's very pretty. Um, we combine this with a walk to Constitution Marsh and uh, right down along the Hudson. Right. Nice spot. Um, you know, there's, if you go there on a hot day, you can kind of wade. They don't want you to swim in there. They got very upset with me for su suggesting you could swim there. Wow, that's not good. Um, so don't mention Steve's name if you go to... Not if you're going to, swimming, no. <laughs> if you go to this site. Now, you mentioned Constitution Marsh, and that, getting back to what I said before, um, it's not easy to find Constitution Marsh in mm -hmm. the Audubon Center, mm -hmm. and that's what I mean by lack of signage. And you think you're going on, on somebody's private property. That road mm -hmm. is a public road, and those people who live along it actually uh, shouldn't be upset if you walk down there. But it feels like you're walking down someone's driveway. It does. And there's so a lot of places like that. Uh, Twin Hill in Patterson is like that. Um, a lot of the places are like that. And, well, we have uh, to put a stop to that, Steve. Because I would love to see uh, more signage I think signage that keeps people away from seeing Constitution Marsh, which is spectacular. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know about that waterfall, but I'm going to go try to find it next time I go down there into the Audubon Society. So you know where to park for Constitution Marsh um, when you go there? You park and then you walk kind of down the hill. You would actually walk up the dirt road underneath that tall bridge that's there. That's how oh, you get to that, those falls. Okay. Uh, I don't suppose there's a sign pointing me towards the falls, though. Not no. when I was there, no. <laughs> there might be now. As I said before. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go back. I think now, where's this? Uh, little Stony Point State Park uh, along the Hudson. Uh, nice little park. Uh, can get crowded on weekends. It's great. Uh, it's one of those places. You can go where, swimming there? Uh, we've swam there. Uh, it is the Hudson. I would not <laughs> drink the water. You can if you want to. Um, so it's a little you bit have muddy. You drink it, but if a little goes down yeah. your throat, uh, that's okay. But, it, but it's right? a very nice spot. And if you if somebody dropped you there in a helicopter, you wouldn't know you're in Putnam County. Really? Now, um, how, where do you park to go to Little Stony Point? Well, Cold Springs had kind of an issue with the amount of traffic they've had. Um, so there's a parking lot right on, what is it, 9N or 9D, just north of Cold Spring. And there's a parking lot right across the street. Now, you've got to cross a pretty major road to get to the trailhead for this. Hmm. And then it's a short walk, maybe a quarter mile in, to get to this little beach. And is is that near um, Riverview Restaurant and, over, you know, where that when you go down the road in Cold Spring and um, there's a big municipal parking lot there? Mm -hmm. It's like the biggest municipal parking lot in Cold Spring. And, uh, and then you can walk over down to the water. Is that? You're going to go north from there. So you would, you would, when you get to the main road in Cold Spring, you'd head north from the actual village of Cold Spring. Uh, I Probably see. Okay. Maybe a half mile or a mile. All right. So it's not where I think it is, but I'll try to find it. <laughs> now this is a familiar site. What is? What are we looking at? Uh, the here? county courthouse. Beautiful. There was actually a guy that was was hanged there, uh, back what? behind the courthouse. Yes, and there's supposedly there on were purpose. Like, yes, uh, there were supposedly like four thousand people attended it. You know, to have picnics. Oh, he was and that a criminal. Thing. Yeah, he had he had shot a, an older man out on kind of out towards Route 301, out towards Cold Spring, and uh, it was interesting. I, I forget the whole story, but kind of the gist of it was there was a signed confession, but the problem was is the kid couldn't read or write. Oh. So it was very interesting. Ooh, okay. And was that the only public hanging we've had in Putnam County? 
It's the only one I've ever found, yeah. Ooh, bad. Um, so anything else you want to tell us about that building? I think it's the with continuously in use courthouse in New York State. Um, yeah, I would recommend, um, you know, it's interesting because at least once a month the um, county legislature holds their public meeting there. Mm -hmm. And uh, up on the upstairs uh, beautiful room, I would recommend anyone who wants to look at a beautiful room go to the legislature's meetings and also you get to participate in democracy by seeing your legislature in action. <laughs> so just a plug for the county courthouse. Um, what's this? Uh, this is over in uh, Kent at the site of the Ludington Mill, uh, the old site of the Ludington Mill. There's a historic marker there, and uh, th that kiosk talks more about work that's going to be done there uh, in the future. There's talk of restoring the mill. Uh, Sybil Ludington's father, Colonel Ludington, had a, a mill right there. Mm -hmm. Now, who's going to pay for that? Uh, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. You mean you? <laughs> no, I, I think it was the Kent Historical Society was putting was trying to raise funds to do that. Okay, and where? How would I find that? Uh, to find that that site, or find out yes, who's find raising that money. Site. Uh, if you get off, I think it's exit seventeen off of eighty four. There's um, there's two gas stations. One of them is a Hess gas station, and you go just past, just north of that, and it's right there on a little side road. Oh, okay. So so it's right off fifty two. Mm -hmm. No sign, I assume. You kind of have to know where you're going. Because, okay. again, it, it's one of those things that feels like you're, you're going somewhere you're not supposed to. Okay. Yeah. So just plow ahead. If you think you're somewhere where you're not supposed to, just keep going, <laughs> and you probably will find something historic. Um, so I guess that's the end of our photos, but it's probably not all of the favorite places you like to go. So tell me about some of the... There's a lot some of places. your favorites. Um, you know, Breakneck is always fun over in Cold Spring if you like a challenge. The Fire now, Tower. Hold on, let's go back to Breakneck. How did it Breakneck get its Ridge. name? Well, the, the story is that there was a bull that was loose that, that they were chasing, and he fell off the cliff, broke his neck. Um, it's a great climb. You, you, it's a scramble the first maybe right. quarter to half a mile using your hands and feet. And, uh, but it's a gorgeous view of the Hudson. There's a fire tower, the Nimham Fire Tower, over in, in off of Gypsy Trail Road in Kent, which is a great hike. Uh, the Putnam County Land Trust has 28 or like 28 or 29 preserves, mostly on mm -hmm. the e eastern side of the county, and they're all great if you want to go out for an hour, two hours, three hours, and do mm -hmm. a hike of you know one to three miles. Uh, if you're looking for something that's going to last you all day, you, know, you could probably hit parts of the Appalachian Trail. There's a lot of little places around. And every, I think everybody always assumes they have to go away to, to kind of go on hikes and do uh -huh. this, they, these things. And you don't have to. There's been places where we had a half hour between soccer games with my kids and we found a little place to do a short hike. Or, you know, Girl Scouts put in a, a trail behind uh, one of the schools over in Mayapak. And it was great to, to go hike it for 30, 40 minutes wow. while waiting for another kid activity. Okay. Um, so if I, if I get your book or if I go on your website or Facebook, um, am I going to know about these hidden gems, these hidden hikes in Putnam? Yeah, well, as I say, the idea is that you can search by town or activity. So if you're going to Patterson for the day, you can search all the things in Patterson. Um, there's also a kind of a blog that I do that as I go out and go to these places, I add those to mm -hmm. the, the listing. So that's kind of chronological. Um, and as I find kind of neat new places, I'll add them to there. Are you but, still writing for the paper? No, I stopped that a couple years ago, um, partially because the book came out, and I started up the website, and life gets crazy with three kids, a job, and all those other things that go on. <laughs> Just living life. Right. And living it was, life. what happens is, like, when it was first started, you know, we were going out, and I, was, I had enough content, and it started to get to the point where it felt like you had to go out to get your article done. Oh, okay. And that Pressure. Take, that takes the fun out of it. Pressure. Yeah, that's no fun. Mm -hmm. um, so you, when I went on your Facebook page and your website, you had lots of pictures of cemeteries. Yes. And you <laughs> seem to be really interested in historic cemeteries, as am I, because I happen to live close to what I think is a beautiful historic cemetery, the Gilead Cemetery. So, yes. um, I, so I picked some of those photos that you had of cemeteries, and okay. I think we can look at them now, and there's an impressive site. Tell us about that. That's uh, Enoch Crosby, who is the Revolutionary War spy, his uh, headstone. 
That was replaced a couple years ago because I guess there was a small headstone there and people were chipping off pieces to I take souvenirs. I heard that. That sounds so odd. So Enoch Crosby has such devoted fans, like Elvis or something, that they come <laughs> and they actually chip off pieces of his of his headstone. Stone. That seems mm -hmm really odd to me but anyways this is Gilead Cemetery right yeah and just so you know a love of cemeteries they call it taphophilia it's a real okay. thing um, <laughs> you know it I, sounds I find like it's a pathology is it uh, taphophilia so, yeah uh, well I but think it, this is particularly historic cemeteries right yeah. well I think the great thing about cemeteries is that you know they're usually quiet a lot of them are well manicured so you're outside you know you walk around you can learn a lot about history and, and life um, you know, it, it makes you realize that you're not going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, I think, this is the cemetery. The Patterson Historical Society kind of rediscovered a cemetery uh, up in Patterson, and they've been working on it to, to restore it. Uh, older, much older cemetery. I uh, can't read a lot of the headstones. Pre, civil, uh, pre, um, uh, if I remember correctly, the Pelletro, War? the Pelletro book from 1884-86, uh, when he wrote that book, this cemetery was pretty much gone at that point. Oh, okay. So, it was, so are we going to find um, any war heroes in there, revolutionary war heroes, like over Gilead and Enoch Crosby? Uh, that would be fantastic if they did. Okay, because I know that there are little cemeteries like this one around Putnam, but I, they're kind of family cemeteries, right? They. Back in the old days, people just cemetery, buried sure. their loved ones nearby in, a, in, in a their corner of the farm type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a there's a guy named Jedediah Wood. Him and his wife were buried on their farm up behind Brewster Village, and uh, myself, Jack Duncan, and a bunch of other people spent about four years searching for the actual burial site, and then the headstone itself because the headstone got moved, and we traced it back to 1980, and then it kind of disappeared. And we, we ended up having the, the family involved, and family came in from out of town to try to help us locate both the mm -hmm. burial site and the stone. And we finally located it. Um, it was it, Someone had moved it to Old Southeast Cemetery, but it had fallen forward and had sunk into uh -huh. the ground. Okay. And just found it by, I don't want to say accident, because we were looking for it for four years, but it was rather fortuitous that I, I literally stepped on it. Who's Jedediah Wood? Uh, him and his brother, they were Revolutionary Era veterans. Uh, the brother, Nemaniah, served in the Revolution. Jedediah uh, served afterward in the militia. And the story is the two brothers took infirm soldiers uh, down the old Nelson Boulevard over to the military hospital in Danbury. Wow. Um, but he's buried up on this hilltop. He wrote his own epitaph, which is a very cool wow. thing. Uh, supposedly he built his own coffin. Like, it's just kind of an all-around cool guy. Yeah. Um, so we had a lot of fun searching He knew for he it. was dying, or he did that early in life to so no one else would have to? I don't know when it was done. Um, and I never saw anything from the family in their research about, you know, what point in his life he had, he had done that. But uh, just a fascinating story. So when you found, you it just stepped on his gravestone, right, that was face down. Mm -hmm. How, what did you do? Did, what made you pick it up and look at it? Or <laughs> uh, Well, this could take forever. Um, we only so, have five minutes. So. All right, so what happened is we'd been researching. I had some old photos from, like, the 50s and 70s of the stone. And the stone had a certain shape. Um, at one point, it, it had a crack in it. Um, from looking at these old photos, I got to know the stone. And I was walking through, and there was a patch of grass that was growing over a stone. And something about the marking on the stone, like the granularity of it, mm -hmm. just looked familiar. So I started peeling back the grass, and I saw the crack. But the crack was the opposite way of I thought I thought it should be. Okay. So I realized it was probably face down. So I dug up you know around the edges of the stone when I lifted it up and actually read the W-O-O-D super excited I bet Big, and it was one of those things that at first I thought my mind was playing tricks on me that it wasn't <laughs> actually a stone that it was actually said Smith but I was reading right, it right um, but you really do have that disease uh, yeah that was good well we were doing this on what they call Bob Palmer Day which is where we replace all the the, the flags for the veterans in the local cemetery so we, we were there with my daughter's Girl Scout troop and I was super excited about it so, but. Well, I'm glad you work with the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. So when I go into these cemeteries, I see that the gravestones are decaying, and sometimes you can't read what's on them. Mm -hmm. Is anyone doing anything to help preserve these, uh, these stones? Mm -hmm. Here you are with a group of Girl Scout Boy Scouts. Uh, that's Boy Scouts. That's, a, that's called the Entrott family plot. 
You're talking about family mm-hmm. plots before? Uh, that large stone right there was Henry Entrott. He came over here as a Hessian soldier fighting for the British. And then I guess the word would be defected, ended up fighting for us, for our cause, and eventually settled in Putnam Valley. He was there, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Yeah. So tell me again about, I am concerned about these stones. What can we do to preserve them? Uh, a lot of times you'll have local Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts will adopt a cemetery to try to take care of them. Oh. I mean, the reality is is that they get older, we can well, try to keep them clean. Right. They're, they're dirty and they're filled with lichen and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is there a way to, to remove that and not damage the stone? Because sometimes I feel like I should just go over to... Gilead with a bucket and soapy water and try to wash those stones, but I don't want to do anything that's going to hurt them. Yeah, I mean, that, some of that lichen takes decades to, to grow. I, you're not supposed to use bleach, not supposed to use anything abrasive. Um, you know, I usually just leave them the way they are. I'll, I'll bring a mirror with me on a sunny day. If you can't read the stone, mm-hmm. if you hold a mirror up to the sun, it can take a stone that's not readable and make it clear as day. Really? Mm-hmm. That's a good tip. Um, so we just have a couple of minutes left. Mm-hmm. So if someone came to you and said, um, mm. <laughs> I knew you probably get this question all the time too, I do. but I'm only going to be in Putnam County a uh, day. Mm-hmm. What is the most important, interesting uh, adventure I can have in Putnam County? Mm. Well, as an editorial, what we should have is something we can hand people to say, look, this is a day tour. You're talking about the history. tourist bureau should be able to do that, or the I don't county. care who does it as long as it gets done. Okay. Um, but I mean, if you really want to see Putnam County, you want to go where there's great views: Shenandoah Mountain off the Appalachian Trail, the the fire tower. You're going to see all the way to New York City, mm-hmm. uh, along the the Hudson River. I would say probably there because of the relation to West Point, the Revolutionary War history, how important the Hudson River was during the Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's so much around. Right. Well, I'd put in a plug for um, Nimham Tower as well because if you go up there, well, I, I mostly go up there in the fall because the view from the top of the tower mm-hmm. is spectacular. Now, you're telling me maybe I only went there on days that weren't that clear, but I don't know if I could see New York City, but I could certainly see over the river and into the Catskills and... It's spect- it looks like no one lives there because of the tree coverage. Mm-hmm. So it looks like you're just looking at it on this um, sort of empty, <laughs> uninhabited thousand acres. So it's I would would you agree with me? I'd say Nimham would would be good, and the yeah. signage to Nimham isn't that bad. So mm-hmm. so anyways, we're out of time. All right. So thanks so much, Steve Matson, for coming and telling us about adventures around Putnam County. And uh, thanks to our crew who comes uh, and uh, volunteers. And thanks yes, for watching. Thank you, everybody.